When I was 16, not even three months after having gotten my driver's license, I completely totaled my mom's minivan. I took my eyes off the road for a split second, and before I knew it, I was in the neighbor's yard having hit three trees. And not only had I broken my nose and received other injuries, but I had been very negligent over something that was entrusted to me. I think any parent in that situation would have had every right to say, you are not driving for a while. And I'm definitely not going to entrust you with another car. Now they may say, if you work hard enough and if you work long enough and if you were able to earn it and save enough money, then that's fine, but we're not gonna help you with it. Well, at some point down the line, due to my parents' kindness, uh, they bought me a used car. Now I suppose if I would have worked for that car, it could have been an occasion for me to boast to my friends. Look at what I did, look at the car, I bought. Look how hard I worked. Look at all the money I saved. Look at me. After I totaled my mom's minivan, here I am driving this new car. However, since the car was a gift from my parents, even after I'd completely blown it, I couldn't really take credit for it, right? It should have changed my mindset from one of entitlement to one of immense gratitude. Well, we're gonna see the same principle playing out in Romans 4 in regards to the basis of the right standing we have before God and, and the reason that God even counts us as righteous. So we're gonna dive into Romans 4, verses four and five. Now, to the one who works, wages are not credited as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the one who does not work, but trusts God who justifies the ungodly, their faith is credited as righteousness. So in our passage, Paul says that if we work for something, then someone owes us. Right? So if I agree to take a job that pays me $20 an hour and I work five hours, then they owe me $100. They're, they're, in, they're in debt to me. On the other hand, if the same place they just came up to me and decided to give me a check for $100, even though I wasn't working there, then that would be a pure gift. Paul is saying that our, our righteous standing before God is like the second example. Now, this is really important. If I receive my right standing before God because I'm in a contractual relationship with him and, and I'm working for him, then in essence, I'm able to put God into my debt. Like, I've been working really hard, God, and, and you, you kind of owe me. That means there are limits to what God can ask me to do. It's kind of like an employer-employee relationship. So that means there are limits uh, to my gratitude because after all, I worked really hard for my righteous standing. So in this scenario, my good works can actually be a way that I put God into my debt, which taints the motive behind the good works that I do. But justification, it comes in and it says that, hey, you were declared righteous solely by faith, which by the way is also a gift, through no merit of your own. So this grace now propels us to incredible good works, but it's no longer to put God into our debt, but in lavish response to the debt that he already took care of through Christ. And so I wanna leave you with this question. Where are you currently attempting to put God into your debt through your good works.